free from three-year device contracts. Switch to T-Mobile and we'll pay off your phone and upgrade you to one of the latest 5G phones free. Colbert's new with the legendary Carol Burnett, tonight on CBS. CBS Next Tuesday. Four dead cops. They were there to exchange a prisoner. Chechen gang. He's a hitman. It's a declaration of war. CBS Tuesday is FBI night. When you see them, kill them all. New episodes next Tuesday. All new CBS Spring on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. It's 11 o'clock. AmeriGuard Security would like to remind you to set your alarm and check your cameras. Trust only the best. Protect your family, home, or business with 24-7 armed response. Remember, AmeriGuard's it. We've joined forces with these organizations to bring you the CBS 47 Cyber Safe Parent Program. Visit yourcentralvalley.com under education and talk to your child about internet safety. This is Murrow and Emmy Award winning CBS 47 Eyewitness News at 11. I'm overwhelmed with all the uh, support that we've gotten for the co community. We're very, 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 we're both very technical. A community comes together tonight to support the parents who lost their two children in a house fire in Kingsburg. Tonight, we're hearing from Carla Reyes, who was injured while desperately trying to rescue her young son and daughter. Beto's Restaurant in Selma held a fundraiser tonight. All the proceeds will go to Vicente and Carla Reyes. The love that my kids brought and, and had for everybody. And all the support that the community has given us is... Oh, well, very, very appreciated. There was a huge turnout of people wanting to help the Reyes family. Carla, as you know, spent four days in the hospital with burns to her face, her legs, her hands. She suffered those burns in smoke inhalation while trying to rescue seven-year-old Gloria and eight-year-old Gerardo from their burning home. They brought light, they brought, brought love, they brought happiness. They, there was... It was just sunshine with them. It was just, they didn't speak much, and they did a lot without speaking. Imagine if they would have spoken. Vicente says that it is a nightmare that they just cannot wake up from. Carla says right now they are focused on saying goodbye to their children. She says the public is invited to attend the funeral services. Those services will be held on Monday, April 8th. A viewing and rosary will be held at 9 o'clock in the morning at Thomas Marcom Funeral Home in Selma, followed by a mass at 11.30 at St. Joseph Catholic Church. For donation information, if you would like to help this family, we have everything you need to know right now on our website, yourcentralvalley.com. Some sunshine for us today. Temperatures climb to the upper 60s and low 70s, which is closer to average, a little bit warmer than yesterday. We're going to keep warming up for our Wednesday, but we're also going to start tracking our next chance of showers by the later evening hours. Let's give you a look outside with our Table Mountain Sky Valley Cam Network. This is going to be a quick time lapse from our CBS 47 studio camera showing all the sunshine that we had today. We're still mostly clear, and we'll just see a few passing clouds tonight. 56 in Fresno. If you're in Lemoore, you're already down to the 40s, and we have 44 in Oak. Tomorrow we'll start out in the 40s, noon temperature mid 60s, and we'll spend the afternoon hours in the 70s. I will talk about the showers heading our way and your pinpoint weather forecast coming up. First, we'll send it back to Catherine. Lauren, thank you. In the South Valley, Visalia police say they found horrific living conditions in a home. And now two people are facing charges of elder abuse and child neglect. This is a look at one of the bedrooms in the home. Police say yesterday a 52-year-old woman was dropped off at Kawea Health Medical Center. She was under the care of her adult daughters, and the woman was emaciated. Police searched the family's home and found horrendous living conditions. 34-year-old Cecilia Rodriguez and 61-year-old Gregory Chavez were arrested. Four children ages 4 to 15 were also living in the home. They were placed in the custody of child welfare services. Today, the man accused of carjacking, kidnapping, and raping a Madera woman last Wednesday was in court for the first time. 54-year-old Otis McKenzie is facing five felony charges. CBS 47's Catherine Phillips has a look at those charges and how his past criminal history could play a role in how the case moves forward. 
Today, McKenzie was just in court for his arraignment, and while the legal process is only beginning in this case, the district attorney says his past conviction of a similar crime could play a huge role in sentencing if he's found guilty. In a red jumpsuit, handcuffed, and in a wheelchair, 54-year-old Otis McKenzie appeared in a Madera County courtroom Tuesday morning. McKenzie is facing five felony charges, including carjacking, kidnapping, and multiple sexual assault-related charges. The criminal complaint alleging McKenzie committed the crime of kidnapping to commit another crime and forcible rape. Madera County District Attorney Sally Moreno says it's one of the worst cases she's seen in her 20-year-long career as a prosecutor. And this is that um, truly terrifying case where it appears to be a complete stranger abduction, uh, just someone who was absolutely in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, and that's all the more terrifying. Madera police say on March 20th, McKenzie carjacked and kidnapped a complete stranger, a woman in her 50s. They say he took her from L Street in Yosemite Avenue Avenue, Madera and drove north. She was eventually able to escape hours later in Modesto. He continued driving and was arrested just south of Sacramento. And very uh, gutsy, showed a lot of chutzpah. She went ahead and ran when she saw the opportunity. Moreno says McKenzie has served decades in prison for a similar crime. And due to his priors, all of the charges come with enhancements. His first case was um, two strikes. So this, he'll be eligible for traditional three strike sentencing on each of his counts, plus enhanced sentencing for a sex offense with prior sex offenses. If convicted in all of the charges he's facing, Moreno says he could spend the rest of his life locked up. 50 to life on each of four charges, so a total of 200 years to life. He's scheduled to appear in court on Thursday for a preliminary bail hearing. Reporting in the studio, Catherine Phillips, CBS 47 Eyewitness News. Fresno County Sheriff's deputies have identified a homicide suspect and they're searching for him right now. They're looking for this man, 36-year-old Angel Gaetan. Detectives say he is a transient and the suspect in the death of 37-year-old Dominic Greco of Clovis. His body was found February 18th on a side street near Chestnut and Harvard Avenues in Fresno. We're not getting into specifics as to um, what led to his death, any sort of weapon or anything like that. Um, but he did uh, suffer severe injury um, that we knew was caused by somebody else. Detectives say Gaetan frequents the area of McKinley and Chestnut Avenues in Fresno. If you have any idea where Angel Gaetan is, you're asked to call 911 immediately. We checked tonight. There is still no word from deputies on how a man in Fresno ended up with an arrow in his chest. He was found Friday walking in the area of Dudley and Lafayette Avenues. So at this point, detectives are still waiting for an opportunity to go and interview him so we can get more substance as to what exactly happened, who may have actually shot him. Uh, but as of right now, it looks like he is supposed to survive his injuries. A last check, he remains in critical condition after undergoing emergency surgery. Farmers are frustrated tonight with a 35% federal allocation and a 30% state allocation of water for crops. This is the Sierra snowpack is now at 100% of normal. CBS 47's Ben Morris with the story tonight. 35% water supply isn't enough for all of our crops. Joe Del Bosque of Del Bosque Farms in Western Fresno County says he and other farmers are disappointed at the recent water allocation. An allocation which would provide 35% of federal water demands to him from the Bureau of Reclamation, as state water project recipients get 30%. Getting precipitation and so forth, and the reservoirs being above, above average, we were hoping to get about 50, 45 to 50%. Maybe that was not realistic, but... That's kind of what we needed. Dabowski grows a variety of crops from almonds to cantaloupes, honeydews and watermelons. He says if the allocations don't improve, everyone will pay the price. We're going to have to cut back our acreage and we're going to have to leave some acreage fallow. That means we're going to leave some land unplanted. And that hurts us as a farmer, it hurts our, our employees, hurts the communities. One potential reason for the allocation shortfall is a familiar one to local farmers. Potential impact on threatened and endangered fish primarily in the Delta. The Delta works to move water from Northern California to the southern part of the state, much moves through the San Joaquin Valley. In hopes of protecting the fish, the pumps that work to move that water south are significantly slowed. Del Bosque says he's hearing impacts could be seen for months. Now he wants the state and federal government to reassess their current protocols. We have to look at those metrics and see 
if there's some way that we can find a little, a little flexibility in the system to still protect the, the fish, but get a little bit more water through. And that's Ben Morris reporting. The city of San Jose is using, using artificial intelligence to detect homeless camps. A camera on a vehicle will be used to collect video of streets and public spaces. The AI system will detect tents, homeless camps, and people. Advocates worry it will be used to push the homeless out. The city says the surveillance will be used to better provide essential services. Tonight, two dozen federal investigators are in Maryland investigating that collapse of a bridge in Baltimore. Six construction workers are feared dead. Ryan Hughes with the latest. The U.S. Coast Guard announced it suspended its search Tuesday evening, saying it doesn't think more survivors of the Baltimore Bridge collapse would be found. At this point, we do not believe that we're going to find any of these individuals still alive. Earlier, FBI divers using robotic cameras were searching for six construction workers who were on the bridge when it collapsed early Tuesday two survivors were pulled from the chilly water. The whole bridge just fell out. Video shows the moment the massive container ship slammed into a support column of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, sending a large portion of the structure into the Patapsco River. Sources tell CBS News multiple alarms rang out on the ship after several failed attempts to fix the ship's loss of propulsion. The pilot issued a mayday call, giving officials time to stop traffic on the bridge. They undoubtedly saved uh, in neural amount of lives. The NTSB is leading the investigation. They want to examine the voyage data recorder. It will be critical. It's a critical piece of our investigation, which is why we have a recorder's team here. The Singapore flagged vessel was headed from Baltimore to Sri Lanka going nine miles per hour. None of the crew was hurt. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg thanked first responders, including those searching the water, and said the region faces a long road ahead. But we will rebuild together. The Port of Baltimore is one of the busiest in the country. It's closed for now and won't reopen until authorities remove all the debris and redredge the river. Ryan Hughes, CBS News, Baltimore County, Maryland. Today, independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. announced his running mate in Oakland. He chose California attorney and philanthropist Nicole Shanahan. Shanahan spent $4 million to fund Kennedy's Super Bowl ad. Listen to Bobby Kennedy in his own words. Take a look at his vision for America. It is a vision that I share too, as I spend the next seven months of my life getting him on each and every ballot in this country. Kennedy was forced to announce his pick for VP early. At least half of the states require him to designate one before he can apply to be on the ballot. Several big names had been mentioned, including NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers and former wrestler and Minnesota governor Jesse Ventura. Tonight was the drawing for the fifth largest Mega Millions jackpot in the history of the game. Worth $1.1 billion. Here's a look at the winning numbers tonight, and yes, a single ticket sold in New Jersey won it all. 13 other tickets, including one sold in Southern California, matched five of the numbers, but not the Powerball. Coming up here on Eyewitness News at 11, why the city of San Francisco is canceling a major annual event celebrating 420. Plus, embracing Japanese culture at Dodger Stadium. Baseball fans will see a new addition to the top deck this week. And Fresno State students serving up meals, a look at their alternative spring break. We're back in about 60 seconds. Our day starts before the sun is up. At the desk, on the street. Eyewitness News this morning. Breaking news and immediate updates with Madeira's Bab. Pinpoint weather with Anthony Bailey for the day ahead. As events unfold, the Eyewitness News evening team provides investigative journalism with Brian Dorman and Catherine Herr. Pinpoint forecasts from Chief Meteorologist Lauren Wallace help plan your week. Award-winning, on-air, online, all day. CBS 47, Eyewitness News.
The war criminal dictator is biding his time, waiting, while House Republicans play right into his hands. Ukrainians have more than held their own, taking back over half the land Russia seized. But now, Valadeo and Duarte are holding Ukraine aid hostage, following orders from Donald Trump. If Ukraine falls, the line between freedom and fascism moves west, and it could be American boots on the ground next. Give Ukraine what they need to win before it's too late. Hey, everybody. Tonight on The Late Show, I'm joined by Jennifer Gardner and a dozen adorable puppies. Her rider is very specific. Tonight on CBS. Stay informed. Stay connected with the Valley Cam Network. Presented by Table Mountain Scott. CBS 47 Eyewitness News at 11 with Catherine Hurd, Brian Dorman, and Pinpoint Weather with Chief Meteorologist Lauren Watts on CBS 47 Eyewitness News. San Francisco's Golden Gate Park is used to filling up with smoke on April 20th, otherwise known as 420 Day. But this year, the popular Hippie Hill gathering is canceled. Organizers say it's due to citywide budget cuts and a lack of sponsors due to the current state of the cannabis industry and the economy. The California Cannabis Industry Association says there has been a 30% loss of cannabis brands over this past year. The cannabis industry, specifically in California, is overtaxed. We are overregulated. We face unchecked competition from illicit markets, and the vast majority of cities and counties throughout the state continue to prohibit sales of any kind. Crowds have been gathering at Hippie Hill long before the state legalized the use of recreational marijuana. New at 11, with the Dodgers boasting Japanese stars Shohei Otani and Yoshinobu Yamamoto, the team is leaning into their longtime history with Japan and will display a historic stone lantern on the top deck at Dodger Stadium. The eight-foot lantern was originally gifted to the Dodgers back in 1965, following the team's goodwill tour to Japan nine years earlier. Fans will be able to visit and photograph the lantern starting on opening day on Thursday. Dozens of Fresno State students are spending part of their spring break giving back to the community this year. As part of Fresno State's alternative spring break program, students had and volunteered opportunities at three different places all around the city. Today, 17 students volunteered to prep and serve food at Papa Mike's Cafe, the Pavarello House. They say they enjoy the interaction and helping people in need. Volunteering is what makes our community, you know, you never, if you haven't done it, I would say definitely try it out. You never know, you might find something that you like. And it's just a small part that we can do to make our community for the better for everyone. Nearly 50 students took part in the program. There were other volunteer events too, one at Scout Island Indoor Center and another at Stone Soup in Fresno. Clovis Rodeo fans are getting a free ride. You'll get the details on a new shuttle service that's being offered this year. That's right after your pinpoint weather forecast. And right now I do have your four-day allergy forecast brought to you by Boz Allergy. Your top pollens, ash, elm, and maple. High levels tomorrow, down to medium Thursday. Then we go up and down for your Friday and Saturday. We're going to be a little bit warmer tomorrow, but we will start watching for our next round of rain in the evening hours. I'll take a look in your pinpoint weather forecast next. A waterfall made of fire, a palace carved out of clay, an eternal torch, and an enduring dream. National parks are extraordinary. So is the support you give them. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience. And the world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Or get 2.9% APR for 72 months on select Sierra 1500 models. We are professional grade GMC. You're looking at some real jack-in-the-box haters. Yeah, they exist. They have no idea they're about to try my new Smash Jack. This is good. It's very fresh. I like that sauce. I'm a saucy woman. Probably not the best. Not the best. She came in a white sedan. Tow it. Almost like a flavor bomb. I don't think it's a fast food hamburger. This is more like a uh, homemade. It's me. <laughs> oh, shoot, Jack. If this is your new burger, yeah. I'm going to you. Say hello to the best rated burger in fast food. Welcome to Jack in the Box. We got that cheesy kind of love. Rally's new sourdough double melt. Double the beef, double the cheese. Now just $3.99. Rally's double melt. 
$3.99. At Fresno Buick GMC, our journey begins with you, the heart of our community. We're more than just a dealership. We're a family. From the moment you step onto our lot to every mile you travel in your new vehicle, we're with you, ensuring your experience is exceptional. Proudly serving Fresno for years, we believe in building lasting relationships. Join our family and experience the difference. Fresno Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Men and women both face factors that can impede normal hair growth and trigger hair loss. Well-Rooted Hair and Scalp Clinic has helped thousands of happy patients address hair loss and scalp disorders. Book your free consultation and get your hair loss under control. Scan now for details. Eyewitness News is brought to you in part by T-Mobile. Now, your CBS 47 pinpoint weather forecast. Good evening and welcome back. I'm Chief Meteorologist Lauren Wallace. High temperatures today, a little bit warmer than yesterday. Upper 60s in and north of Fresno County. That's close to average. If you were in Hanford or Lemoore, you did hit the low 70s today. And that's where I expect more of you to be tomorrow. So we're going to be a little bit warmer, bringing us into the 70s. And then things really start to change again tomorrow evening. 56 right now, Fresno. You're down to the 40s if you were in Lemoore. Merced at 54 and Oakhurst currently at 41 degrees. Here's the last 12 hours radar satellite loop you won't see much happening in the valley today lots of sunshine a little more in terms of cloud cover at times in the sierra today i do expect to see just a few passing clouds tonight we'll get to see some sunshine tomorrow and then it's as we get into the evening hours tomorrow that we'll see that next chance for a few showers so let's run you through your forecast here's 11 o'clock this evening again a few passing clouds throughout tonight here's seven o'clock tomorrow morning first part of the day we're talking about some sunshine i pause this at noon so you can see the clouds starting to increase from north to south but we're all still dry and now let's fast forward to seven o'clock tomorrow evening by this point if you're in the north valley or in the northern foothills you're going to see that chance for a shower we'll start to see some snow spreading into the sierra snow levels at this point are going to be six seven thousand feet in elevation as we go through the rest of the evening hours and overnight everyone's going to get the chance to see at least a couple of spotty showers here's seven o'clock on your thursday morning we'll start out the day with a chance of showers but as we go through the rest of the day we're going to see more of a drying trend so we'll get a bit of a break from the showers for the second half of Thursday for most of you and then for the first half of Friday as well but later Friday and into the weekend we do have yet another round of rain and snow on the way so let's talk about the numbers this is your rainfall forecast running through Thursday evening in and north of Fresno I expect you to see up to about a quarter of an inch of rain South Valley we're talking near and below a tenth of an inch of rain and for those of you in the foothills you will be hovering closer to a half of an inch of rain moving on to the winter weather we do have a winter weather advisory that will start at 8 o'clock tomorrow evening that's going to last through Thursday evening and this is going to be for our mountain areas above 7,000 feet including parts of our Fresno County Mountains, Madera and Mariposa County Mountains as well. Uh, here's their forecast range 7 to 14 inches of snow but very gusty wind very strong wind possible up to about 50 miles per hour. 47 for your low tonight again everyone stays dry mostly clear to partly cloudy 44 Hanford along with Merced 38 for those of you in Mariposa and then high temperatures tomorrow like I mentioned a little bit warmer pushing most of you in the valley into the 70s, 72 Fresno, Tulare, Hanford, Lemoore, and Los Banos, all at 74 tomorrow afternoon. Then we get the changes. Showers move in tomorrow evening. I do expect to see some showers Wednesday night with a chance of a few lingering showers on Thursday, mainly in the morning hours. Temperatures drop back to the mid 60s on Thursday. Again, most of you will get a break from the rain Thursday afternoon through early Friday. And then Friday afternoon, we have another chance of showers moving in. I do expect showers, even a rumble of thunder Saturday with a slight chance for a shower hour on your Sunday. In the Sierra, we're going to see some snow showers moving in. Uh, snow levels, like I mentioned, closer to 6,000 feet. They will drop as we continue to see that chance of sho uh, snow showers Friday and then more snow on the way Saturday with snow levels staying at 5,000 feet. So we're still going to see some rain, some snow over the next couple of days. If you like the sunshine in 70s, we get a little bit of a taste for the first half of tomorrow. All right, Lauren, thank you so much. Well, with the Clovis Rodeo just about a month away, the Clovis Rodeo Association announced a free shuttle service. That shuttle service will run from the parking lot behind K1 Speed Cart Racing at Sierra Vista Mall to the corner of Veterans Parkway and 4th Street. 
Rodeo officials say that this free service is meant to provide convenience for guests and also alleviate traffic. The 110th edition of the Clovis Rodeo takes place from April 24th to the 28th. For information about the shuttle schedule, just visit our website, yourcentralvalley.com. Coming up next in sports, one of the biggest names in boxing in Fresno today, helping to promote a big card involving a Valley native. More on that next in Sports Central. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow. Nice. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Get low 3.99% APR on Highlander or choose a low lease on RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. Bounced from one doctor to the next. Did they even send my lab work? Wait, was I supposed to bring that? Then there's the forms, the bills, the not a bills, the... Press forward and repeat the caption. Healthcare can get a whole lot easier when your medical records care and coverage are in one place. At Kaiser Permanente, all of us work together for all that is you. I had a simple idea and community helped me turn it into something bigger. Community saved my son's life. Community is improving access to care for everyone. Community helps us inspire our kids and our future. Community shows their commitment to downtown Fresno every day. My community cares for everyone. Together, we are helping people find their purpose. My family. My inspiration. My mission. My home. My community. Disaster and damage can strike any time. It's good to know the professionals at SurPro have the training and equipment to get your life back on the right track. Whether it's water, fire, or storm damage, for restoration and cleaning, count on SurPro of Clovis, Visalia, Fresno, and Shaver. CBS 47 is on your side. Contact us for Eyewitness News Investigates. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow. Nice. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Get 1.99% APR on Tundra or check out the all-new redesigned 2024 Tacoma. Toyota, let's go places. Now your CentralValley.com pros who know. Today's carpets are softer, thicker, and more stain resistant. At half the cost of hard surface flooring, carpet is the perfect way to make your home more stylish and comfortable. For more expert advice, go to yourcentralvalley.com slash pros who know. I was a small town Montana girl that came to Fresno and the Central Valley really welcomed me in. I also love to go to the Central Coast. That's where my grandma and her family used to hang out. I started as a reporter here and reporting is where my heart and my passion is. Not only are we invested in the community, but we are dedicated to being able to have some fun at times, but also are very serious about the work that we do and the information that we're delivering to you at home. Now, Sports Central, presented by Toyota. Boxing royalty was in Fresno Tuesday. 11-time world champion Oscar De La Hoya posing for photos with the Fresno Grizzlies jersey provided by Grizz president Derek Franks. Oscar in town to help promote the next big fight card coming to the Save Mart Center on April 27th. You know, the main event of that card will feature Avenal native Jose Ramirez, who just recently signed up with De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. It'll be Jose's first fight in over a year, and it'll be his first fight under the Golden Boy umbrella. At Tuesday's press conference for the card, which will also feature undefeated welterweight Virgil Ortiz Jr. in the co-main event, De La Hoya is saying it was a no-brainer to bring this fight to Fresno, considering Ramirez's strong ties to the area. Jose is 31 now and has only fought twice in the last couple years, but He's hoping this could be the beginning of an exciting second chapter to his career. I'm feeling strong. You know, I'm sparring guys who are 14 and 0, 4 and 0, guys who are, you know, who, are, who want to become world, world champions. And they, they all tell me, man, Jose, you're better than, we, than what we thought. Like, you're strong, you're smart, you're fast. I want to make sure the second half of his career is, uh, is better than his first half. Uh, in terms of winning world titles, in terms of him making money, uh, bigger events, Las Vegas. That's what the Golden Boy machine brings to the picture. Ramirez will be facing an older Cuban fighter who is a former two division world champion. By the way, in appreciation for the work they do, Golden Boy is supplying 3,000 ticket vouchers for Central Valley farmers. The accolades keep coming for 15-year-old golf sensation asterisk tally. The Chowchilla High freshman is one of 10 girls who've been selected to the USGA's inaugural national junior team. 
This team representing the country's elite junior golf talent, and the USGA is hoping the program will help nurture the potential of America's top junior players. Finally, to that video from Tuesday, a little better than the rest. It's Bemis' best. Good at bats, not trying to be greedy. That's a nice at bat. Cova Rubius into right center. Reaching up is the center fielder, and what a catch by McKernan. It was a rough night overall for the Diamond Dogs in Irvine against USC, but Mount Whitney product Michael McKernan did provide a highlight. And even though the Dogs lost 10-1, the Visalia native does get a coveted spot in Bemis' best. One high school baseball note before I go. After two days of games, the championship game is set for the 54th annual Easter Baseball Classic. It's going to be Clovis versus Clovis North at Clovis West High School, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Try to say that. Ten times fast, guys. Back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Still to come on Eyewitness News at 11, Shakira takes over Times Square. We'll have more on this surprise concert coming up straight ahead. Hi, I'm Lamont Jones. Ask me about my Honda. Ask anyone in the 100,000 mile club. Ask me about my Honda. Ask anyone in the 500,000 mile club. Ask me about my Honda. Ask anyone who's driven nearly 1 million miles in their Honda. Ask, Ask us, us about, about our Honda. Honda. From its legendary longevity to its low cost to own. There are lots of reasons to buy a Honda. But none truer than this. Honda is value. Ask anyone who owns a Honda. Get a great deal on a new Honda Civic and join the club at your Central Valley Honda dealer. April 30th, get a fixed rate mortgage loan at EECU for as low as 5.633% APR with no origination fee. Apply online today at myeecu.org. EECU is an equal housing lender. At Fresno Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Fiat, treating our customers right, along with competitive pricing, has kept us in business for over 30 years. Our family-owned dealership is committed to great customer service before, during, and after the sale. And you'll always find a great selection with prices that make buying local make sense. Double up on savings during Ram Truck Month and Dodge Power Shot Days, going on all month long. We look forward to earning your business. Come join our family today. Fresno Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Fiat on Blackstone between Bullard and Sierra. We do continue to keep a close eye on our southern border. If you want to cover the border. We got this really rare opportunity to go on this exclusive ride along with Mexican military. You have to be at the border. And we are live right now with the Cochise County Sheriff. We're literally flying alongside the wall here. Trust News Nation to bring you the whole picture. It's important for News Nation to be boots on the ground showing you exactly what's happening. News Nation. News for all America. Recently, my family and I moved to the Central Valley so we could afford a home. I live with my parents and I work full time. I do help out at home, either with groceries or with certain bills. I have student loans. A lot goes into my gas expenses. My commute to work is 45 minutes. I spend a lot on that. John Duarte voted to raise costs on virtually everything. Groceries, utilities, and even my parents' health care. He even voted to make it harder to lower gas prices. I got a long drive to work. Tell John Duarte we can't afford higher costs. Coming up tomorrow, popping the question with a puppy. The ultimate proposal tomorrow. And more rain is on the way. I'll tell you when. Join us tomorrow. Coming up on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, tonight's guests are Carol Burnett and a performance by Waxahachie. New York's Times Square turned into Shakira Square tonight. The pop star held a surprise concert. The singer announced the free pop-up concert in a social media post. Her fans flooded Times Square. The show followed the release of Shakira's latest album. 
What a treat if you were in New York. Wow. Yeah, look at all those people. Yeah, <laughs> quite a few. It looks like it's New Year's Eve. Yeah. All right, let's look at the weather before we go. All right, we're going to see some sunshine early on tomorrow. Temperatures warm to below 70s. It's as we get into the evening hours, we'll start to see a few showers spreading in from the north. I do expect some spotty showers Wednesday night, lingering into Thursday morning. Then we'll get a break through Friday afternoon. Then showers and storms this weekend. And that will do it for this edition of Eyewitness News at 11. Stay tuned for The Late Show with Stephen Colbert next. Good night. Celebrating 47 years as the best selling trucks in America with special once a year offers on Ford F Series, including the new 2024 Ford F 150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate America. This is Ford Truck Month. Right now, get a 2023 Ford F 150 at 1.9% APR for 72 months, only at your California Ford dealers. On this magical day, I vow that you will always be the most important. Wow, brothers. The most important. No, it's a good time. Absolutely. We'll make sure you get the best care and pay nothing up front. Sharvin. Make sure to tell them they don't pay unless they win. The Law Brothers are always there for their clients. You may kiss the bride. Law Brothers. For the first time in four years, the Grappetti Automotive family's biggest sales event returns. The battle of the dealerships is back. Visalia Toyota, Visalia Honda, Nissan of Visalia, Visalia Ford, and Visalia GMC. Each dealership is battling to come out on top. Take advantage of our most competitive offers of the year now through March 30th at the Grappetti Automotive family. Need help? CBS 47 is on your side. Contact us. Japanese baseball star Shohei Otani has broken his silence on the gambling scandal surrounding his former translator. Via his new interpreter, Otani denied any knowledge of gambling and said the money was stolen from his account, adding, quote, I'm very saddened and shocked that someone who I have trusted has done this. And now, Shohei Otani's first comments on the controversy through his new interpreter. He says, hey, and he's so happy that I'm his translator. He says, put it all on Captain's Boy to place in the third at Belmont. Go ahead. He says, my wife Cheryl should just calm down about the college fund. We'll win it back. Are you listening, Cheryl? That's his words, not mine. It's The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Tonight, Oak of Wall Street. Plus, Stephen welcomes Carol Burnett. And musical guest, Waxahachie. Lewis Cato and the Late Show Band. And now, live on tape from the Ed Sullivan Theater in New York City, it's Stephen To the Late Show, I'm your host Stephen Colbert, and I'm being told this is just—is this true? Is this true? And here, th this just in: we have breaking news. Donald Trump is upset about something. 
Can we fact check that? That is true. Okay. <laughs> Evidently, I'm just finding this out now, one of the things that Joe Biden has been running on in this election is the success and the popularity of Obamacare. It's all part of the radical political theory that people enjoy staying alive. Well, <laughs> this idea seems to have ruffled Trump's dander. Because just a short time ago, he truthed, I'm not running to terminate the ACA as crooked Joe Budden <laughs> disinformates and misinformates all the time. It's true. No, folks.